All right, let's make a drum kit. Um, I found this example from uh, Wes Boss. He has this JavaScript 30 challenge, um, but I've modified it a bit because his is a little more advanced. This is a little more simple, um, but it's good practice on if statements. Okay, the main idea is we're going to have actually let's uh, there's some start code I've shared with you. Um, it's loading a style sheet already with, with a bunch of styles in it, and it's got a body with a div of keys, and each inside of here we've got a div of class key and it has like the a key and then the sound that it's going to use okay called clap um, and that's just a whole bunch of different divs inside of there and then I load these audio tags um, I haven't um, allowed the controls to be visible visible so you don't actually see these audio elements but they're they're loaded and these sounds are loaded um, and all those sounds are inside of this folder here okay and then we've got our JavaScript there so if I go live with this, you should see I've got a background image. These are all my divs that I use the flex box to make them horizontal. And then my idea is you press the A key and it'll make a clap sound. You press the S key, it'll do a hi-hat, D kick, etc. Okay, that's the goal. Um, this video will probably be just getting the sounds playing and then we'll also add a little animation so that this gets bigger and adds a border every time we hit the key. All right. So part one is let's just get these sounds working. So just be aware that we'll, we'll have to be able to select each audio element using their ID. It's very straightforward, clap, hi-hat, kick, right? So the name of the sound is the ID of the element. And then each of these divs um, also will style those later and those have the ID that's the same as the, the key that it represents. Okay. So let's go to our main.js, which is empty, and let's get started. All right, first thing I want is I want to listen for key events on the page. So I'm just going to go document.addEventListener. I don't have to select any specific elements on the page. I actually just want the entire page. So whenever the web page is active and I do a key, I'm going to add an event called key down. So not click, that's what we usually do. This will be key down. And then I'm going to call a function called, um, what do we want to call it? Let's call it play, play sound. All right, so let's make that event function. So we define the function called play sound, open and close parentheses, open and close braces. Okay, and let's just do a quick little console.log. Um, key down to know that hey yes I did press a key and it called this function all right so we save that go to our drum kit let's open up the console and oh it said key down already I press any key on my keyboard and it prints out key down okay cool now this is uh, we haven't seen this before but I need to know what key is pressed now, in order to do that, um, JavaScript does something. When you add an event listener and you give it a function, when it calls this function, it gives us some information about the event that just happened. And to do that, inside of these parentheses here, we can define a variable called event. And if I were to go console.log event, you'll see that it gives me a bunch of information about the event that happened. All right, let's try this. So now if I press the A key, it's printing out, oh, a keyboard event happened. The key was A, the code is key A. Like there's all this information. Key code was 65. Like there's all this information about that event that just happened. Okay. If I press F, all right, it should have printed, oh, another keyboard event happened. This time the code key or the key was F. The key code was 70, right? So this event variable that we have right here, we it basically stores um, data about the event that happened. And JavaScript gives me that event so that I can use it inside of this function. And usually I use the key code event to keep track of what key um, was pressed. So if we go event dot key code, you should be able to see now when I press A, that's 65. When I press S, that's 83. D is 68. Each key has its own unique key code. Spacebar is 32. 
shift, left shift is 16, right shift is also 16. Cool. Anyway, so that's important, right? This event, we define the event inside of this function here. It's called a parameter and it will get information about the event. Cool. Now I want to do an if statement. If event.keyCode is equal to, what was A again? 65, right? If I press A, 65. So if event.keyCode equals 65, I'm going to make a little comment, just reminding myself that this is the A key. All right. What do I want to do? I want to play, um, what is A? Clap sound, right? Play A, which is clap. All right. To do that, I need to get this audio element with the ID clap, and I need to tell it to play. All right. So I'm going to go document .get element by ID clap, and I can go dot play. Believe it or not, it's as easy as that. I hope. I shouldn't say anything. Let's turn the volume up just to make sure we can hear it. I'm going to save that. And now when I press A, I've got my clap sound. Okay. We're going to make one little change because if I spam A, right, see how it's it's delaying, right? Like I'm pressing it like three, I pressed it four times there, but only played once. All right. So what we can do for that is we can go... Um, I'm going to copy and paste this. I can go document of get element by ID. And before I play it, there is a current time property that I can set to zero. So basically, every time, right? Now, every time I press the key, it'll interrupt the previous play that was happening and set the current time back to zero and then play from the beginning again which gives it more of a realistic, natural flow. You don't have to, you press A and it always makes a sound. Okay. All right, one thing I wanna talk about here for efficiency is notice how I have the exact same document .get element by ID clap twice. And this is actually a pretty um, expensive operation, right? Like it takes JavaScript some work to search the document for this element and I'm making it do it twice in a row. A way that we can fix that is we can actually um, create a variable that will store this element that I look for. Okay, so I'm going to say let audio be assigned document get element by ID clap. So that now this variable audio now stores a reference to this audio element with the ID clap. I can now replace this with my variable audio, and I can also replace this with my variable audio. So that's more efficient because I only search the document once and I store what I found in a variable and then I can reference that variable multiple times without having to search for it. Let's just make sure that still works. Awesome. Okay, now all I need to do, I've got this basic code. I'm just gonna copy and paste this and change Let's look up the next one, S for hi-hat. S is key code 83. So I'm just going to go, okay, if key code equals 83, which is S, I'm going to play S, which is my hi-hat. Audio is going to be hi-hat, like that. And then current time zero, audio.play. Let's make sure hi-hat is correct. Yeah, that's the ID. All right, it has to match. Let's save that. Cool, I've got A and S working. And again, I could copy and paste. This time, I'm just going to hit Shift Alt F to format it to make sure it's tabbing properly. Next up is D, which is 68. All right, 68 right there for D, that's the kick. So if key code is 68 which is the letter D, that's my D kick, set that to kick, there's my D for the kick, S is hi-hat, A is clap, cool. All right, 
Okay, last thing in this video, we'll do, in the next video, we'll add an animation so that when I hit the clap, it'll like, you'll see this thing will animate, it'll add a border, it'll get bigger, and then it'll shrink again. So it's like you're pressing that button, you'll see it. Um, but for now, the last thing I want to say is this if statement chain I have here is inefficient as well. If I press a key and I run this function, if I press 65, there's no chance that I the key code is 83 or 68, but I'm making JavaScript check anyway, right? So if this is true, if key code is 65, I'm still checking if it's 83 and checking if it's 68. That's also inefficient. It still works, but it's inefficient. It's better to do a chain selection statement where I do this as an else if and as an else if. Because when you do this chain selection like that, if, else if, else if, basically what happens is if this is true, it skips the rest. If this isn't true, then it'll go to the next one. If this is true, it'll skip the rest. If it's not true, then it'll go to this one. It's more efficient. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now. I hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.